So we're going to let f of x equal ln x. Um, and we're going to suppose that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0 0.1. And we want to find a reasonable upper bound for the Taylor series from 0 to 3 where of x, where a is 1. Okay, so now our formula here to calculate error, to find our upper bound, says that the error for some value of n is equal to the absolute value of our expression of r to that n, which leads us with our Taylor series for n plus 1. Okay, so then let's we have to set up our Taylor series. So this is, say, f prime of x. To find what these derivatives are, we have 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. Then we have our second derivative of x, which is negative 1 times x to the negative 2. So this is negative 1 over x squared. Then our third derivative. is negative 1 times negative 2 is just 2 for x to the negative 3, so 2 over x cubed. Okay. So now I want to calculate um, our values of our function of x between for the 0 th through 3rd derivative for when x equals 1. So f at 1 is the ln of 1, the natural log of 1, which is 0. The first derivative at 1 is 1 over 1, or 1. Our second derivative at 1 is negative 1 over 1 squared, which is negative 1. And then our third derivative at 1 is 2 over 1 cubed, so that's 2. All right. So now if we look, we can see our function for any derivative, and I'm just going to call it n plus 1th derivative, at x is equal to, as you can see on top, it goes from 1, negative 1, positive, so we have plus or minus. But what you can also see is if we went to the next derivative, this would be 2 times 3, so that would make that 6 or 3 factorial. So you see, 3 factorial for the 4th, or 2 factorial for the 3rd, that makes this n factorial over, um, over our bottom is just x to the n plus 1, as we were looking at before. Okay, So we would take the absolute value for our function at n plus 1, C, that would be less than or equal to, for some C between x and 1, um, that would be between n factorial and C to the n plus 1. All right, so now we need to figure out what the C is. So we know that, I'm going to go back to the white chalk here. Okay, so we know that here that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0 0.1. That's the same as negative 0 0.1 is less than or equal to x minus 1, which is less than or equal to 0 0.1. So if we add 1 to both sides to just get x, we have 0 0.9 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1.1. And now our c is going to be in that same range so 0 0.9 is less than or equal to c, which is less than or equal to 1.1. Now, in, for when your function here is increasing in value, you're going to want to go for this upper one. But since as we have more and more derivatives, the value of this becomes smaller and smaller, we're going to want to go with this for our c. So when you see this, you're going to want to see n plus 1 over 0 0.9 to the n plus 1. Yep. And by equal to, I mean less than or equal to. Okay. So 
Now we want to set up our error. So we have error for n, where x when a equals 1 is equal to the absolute value of f to the n plus 1 derivative at c over n plus 1 factorial times x minus 1 to the n plus 1. Okay, so that is less than or equal to f of n to the f of n to the n plus 1 derivative of f of c, there we go, is n factorial over 0 0.9 to the nth plus 1. Okay, and then times x minus 1 to the n plus 1. Keep that as an absolute value over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so n plus 1 divided by n plus, n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial just leaves you with just n plus 1 in the denominator. So that's the same as x minus 1 is the n plus 1 over 0 0.9 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1, okay? So, we saw here that x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0 0.1. So we have, this is that's what we have here is also less than or equal to 0.1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times 0 0.9 to the n plus 1. Okay. So then we have for our error, our upper bound at 3 is less than or equal to 0 0.1 to the fourth over. 4 times 0 0.1, 0 0.9 to the fourth. Okay. Yep. Looks right. So that's our part for A. Okay. Okay, so now B says, what is it for, what is the smallest n in which our error Of our Taylor when a is 1, what is the smallest n such that it is less than the right amount of zeros? Mm, yes, no, one more. Okay, well, if we calculate this, which comes out to approximately equal to. You can use your calculator. I wrote down the number. And that is 0 0.00038104. All right, so this number is less than that. Awesome, great. So that's a viable n, but is it the smallest? Best way to check it, n equals two. So we have n right, equals two. That comes out to 0 0.1 to the third over 3 times 0 0.9 to the third. And that's approximately equal to 0 0.00045724. And this is greater than 0 0.0001, the number we were looking to be less than. Therefore, that means that our n, smallest n is 3. Great. Okay. So now we want to find some lambda 
we want to um, we want to find the largest lambda greater than zero, so that the accuracy of x, the absolute value of x minus one, is less than or equal to lambda for the best reasonable upper bound. So to do that, we have let's suppose that suppose that x minus one is less than or equal to lambda. Um, again, this means that negative lambda is less than or equal to x minus 1, which is less than or equal to lambda. And if we add 1, we have, oh, uh, yes, we have 1 minus lambda is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1 plus lambda. Okay. So that means that because our C was in that same range before, it's still going to be in that same range. So we have 1 minus lambda is less than or equal to C, which is less than or equal to 1 plus lambda. Okay. So now if we looked at, so much like before that we had n factorial over C factorial was less than or equal to 1 minus lambda, we now have this is um, n factorial over 1 minus, yes, you, you know what I'm talking about, that it's n factorial over, so that's re weirdly written, it's not c to the c factorial, it's c to the n plus 1, so we have 1 minus lambda to the n plus 1, there we go. Ugh. So instead of this being 0 0.9 like it was before, we don't know what this is specifically, so it's 1 minus lambda. Okay. So then if we set up our error, our error for some value of n function at, so that's going to come out to being less than, just replacing where it says 0 0.9, basically. And we have, and replacing where it says 1, we now have lambda, so we have uh, lambda to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times 1 minus lambda to the n plus 1. Okay. So we want a lambda that's as big um, as we can to produce that upper bound. So in order we want it to be, um, we want that last quantity to be above 0 0.001, which is this here, um, when n equaled 3. So we had when n equals 3, so let's just use it again. So we have lambda for n equals 3, comes out with lambda to the fourth of 4 times 1 minus lambda to the fourth. And that's going to be less than or equal to 0 0.001. Okay. So now, to figure out what lambda is, I'm going to break this up into two equations. Just because. And so I've decided my top, we have lambda to the fourth over 4. And that's going to be less than or equal to 0 0.001. And then we have 1 over 1 minus lambda. Yes, um, 1 over 1 minus lambda to the fourth, and that's less than or equal to 1. Right. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to actually rewrite this over here and then erase that a little bit so we have some more room. So we have lambda to the fourth over 4 times 1 minus lambda to the fourth is less than or equal to 0 0.0001, okay? Okay. So I'm going to call this equation I and equation J. So if we solve for lambda and I, we get, if we multiply both sides by 4, we have lambda to the fourth is less than or equal to 0 
4. Is that the randomizers? No, I just forgot one. That's how I did it. Just move the decimal point. Okay, so that means if we take the fourth root, if lambda is less than or equal to 0 0.1 times the fourth root of 4, so I'm going to write it as 4 to the 1 fourth. Okay, so now if we look at equation J, we have 1 over 1 minus lambda to the fourth is less than or equal to 1. Multiply both sides of 1 minus lambda to the fourth, so we have 1 is less than or equal to 1 minus lambda to the fourth. Take the fourth root. So we have fourth root of 1 is just 1. So 1 is less than or equal to 1 minus lambda. So now if we subtract 1 from both sides, we have 0 is less than or equal to lambda. Let's write this over here. To negative lambda, but can't have negatives, so we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1, which changes the sign of our inequality. So we end up with 0 is greater than or equal to lambda. Yes, okay. So now we, this one here will show us that for lambda is less than or equal to 0 0.1 to the fourth root from 0 0.1 times 4 to the one fourth or uh, the fourth root of four, that proves to be, quote, reasonable. Oh, I'm holding Jack. Reasonable. So if we erase this section right here, just to give us some room. Really don't need that much room, but erasing it nonetheless. So we can say that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0 0.1 times 4 to the 4th over 1 plus 0 0.1 times 4 to the 1 fourth. That's our answer.